today. Warner Brothers looked upon their failures and said, yes, more of that, please. This is Checkpoint. Welcome to Checkpoint, where we're ironically enjoying Helldivers memes. What unironically here for liberty and democracy. Yeah. And workers' rights. Oh, that's not in Helldivers. Oh. Between rebranding the HBO out of Max and sending completed movies to the shredder for the tax write-off, the new stakeholders at Warner Brothers have been making some ball-achingly bad decisions, and that extends to their gaming division. J.B. Perret, WB's head of global streaming and games, spoke at a Morgan Stanley event on the topic of WB's future plans for gaming. Their recent focus has been AAA console games, which Perret notes is a volatile market, and so their plan to reduce some of that volatility is to focus on tentpole franchises and take those franchises to the mobile, free-to-play, and live service spaces. And if that sounds fucking baffling, bear with me, because he identifies four of their biggest IPs as Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, Mortal Kombat, and DC Comics. Yes, he specifically mentioned DC Comics. Circle back to that later. This is the company that released Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy, a single-player game, and by some metrics, the best-selling game of the year, saying that space is too volatile and that they need to focus on live services after recently releasing not one but two DC Comics-focused live service games that both underperformed. I know that people have said for years that executives seem mentally divorced from reality, but how do you look at the state of live service fatigue across the industry, not to mention your games specifically, and decide the multi-million selling single-player game is not the route forward. We'll be keeping these quotes handy for the next time Warner Brothers lays off 500 people, but JB somehow keeps his job. Once again, people are getting mad on the internet, and this time it's about a Nintendo Switch ad. The complaint? It's making people feel old. The ad, which features two siblings, one of which is moving out to go to university, in the process of packing, he discovers his old 3DS and then remembers all the fun he had playing Pokemon with his brother. As a side note, I have no idea how these kids didn't kill each other trying to share a single 3DS, but tellingly, they both have their own Switches now. The ad ends with them enjoying playing Pokemon together before the older sibling leaves. It's nice, but the bugbear up everyone's ass is that people now feel old because the commercial makes the 3DS seem like it's retro. And let's be clear, at no point does the ad say anything like, hey, check out this old retro console. People are just feeling old because they're reminded that they're getting older. But the problem is the commercial is aimed at teenagers graduating high school this year, 2024. Of course, the 3DS would be the childhood console because the 3DS launched in 2011. That's 13 years ago when the kid in this ad would be five. That's not an attack. It's just the relentless march of time. Are people really mad that there might be a commercial that's not aimed directly at them? Why? You can't be a young and relevant consumer demographic forever. Why not take some solace in the fact that you're finally free from the endless assaults of advertisers that are trying to manipulate your emotional state to benefit them? And if inner peace isn't your thing, take some perverse pleasure in the fact that in 12 years time, there's going to be a commercial showing someone dusting off their old switch before they go to university, and it's going to make all the people that this commercial is aimed at feel old too. As part of recent changes to European Union regulations, Apple, among others, are now obliged to allow sideloading onto their devices, which is to say, loading apps from marketplaces other than, for example, Apple's App Store, cutting Apple out of profits in the process. This Digital Markets Act, or DMA, is pretty cool for consumers, at least those who live in the EU. Sadly for Epic Games, this won't be something that they're able to take advantage of since their Apple developer account was terminated. Now, there's some nuance here, so bear with me. You may recall that owing to flagrantly contravening the publishing terms of service by adding an outside payment system to Fortnite, Apple previously revoked Epic's dev account and thereby their ability to publish games in the App Store. Worth reminding you that Epic knew that would happen and it was purposely done to frame Apple as the enemy of developers while they secretly spun up their white-label iOS advocacy group. 
And while that specific court case did not go Epic's way, and Apple was not forced to put Fortnite back on the iPhone, these new EU DMA regulations are giving Epic what they claimed they were fighting for, sideloading for all publishers. But they don't get what they really wanted, which was sideloading for them in particular. Epic recently applied and was automatically approved for a new, different developer account, specifically for Epic Games Sweden. But once reviewed by human eyes, Apple denied that account. Epic's Tim Sweeney has been fairly successfully rabble-rousing on Twitter that this is punitive, that Epic is being singled out and punished for their anti-Apple stance. And for Apple's part, uh, yeah. It, it's, it's their opinion that they terminated Epic's original account for contravening the terms of service, and the same company isn't allowed to sign up for a new account under a different name and circumvent that. And furthermore, Tim Sweeney's ongoing criticism of Apple indicates to them that Epic is very likely to try that shit again in legal terms. So Epic is saying that this is a violation of the DMA, and Apple is saying, no, no, they'll oblige by the DMA, but Epic specifically has shown that they will not act in good faith to which Tim Sweeney is reacting very normally by comparing not being allowed to release Fortnite on iOS to the Spanish Inquisition eradicating the Moors from Iberia. And I'm not saying Apple is necessarily in the right here either. What I am saying is that I delight in watching these two entities have a slap fight. Tropic Haze LLC, the company behind the Yuzu Switch emulator and the 3DS emulator Citra, have opted not to try and fight Nintendo in court, saying that they will consent to judgment in favor of Nintendo to settle a federal lawsuit brought against them last month. According to a series of filings posted Monday and reported by Ars Technica, Tropic Haze has agreed to pay Nintendo $2.4 million in monetary relief and to stop distribution, advertising, and hosting of the Yuzu software. They also posted an extremely guilt-accepting statement to their Discord, part of which read, Yuzu and its team have always been against piracy. We started out the projects in good faith out of passion for Nintendo and its consoles and games, and we're not intending to cause harm, but we can see now that because our projects can circumvent Nintendo's technological protection measures and allow users to play out games outside of authorized hardware, they have led to extensive piracy. Although a settlement isn't technically a setting of legal precedent, this still doesn't look great for the emulation community, which despite how this case shook out and the tone of Yuzu's apology, does have a lot of legitimate uses, particularly for archival purposes of old out-of-print games. That said, the Yuzu community really didn't do itself any favors when they bragged about playing Switch games before they were even released, and the developers had themselves a Patreon bringing in over $30,000 USD a month. But this probably isn't the end for playing old Nintendo games even after their original consoles go out of production. There's Ryu Jinx, another Switch emulator, which is no doubt trying to lie as low as possible right now, and they're annoyed I even mentioned their name. And Nintendo itself is making its own baby steps to make old games available. Just last month, they added Blast Core and RC Pro-Am to Nintendo Switch Online, which is only $50 a year if you want to play everything on it. Hey, to be fair, of all the subscription services that I pay for despite basically never using, Nintendo Switch Online is one of the most medium. Eh, it's better than Dash Pass. Yeah, and it beats the hell out of that government subscription I pay every year. Do you mean taxes? Yeah, that one's so expensive and it doesn't even come with Star Trek. Coming up... In an effort to better balance the Helldiver's weapon offerings, the game's new patch brings some small nerfs to the player favorites, Breaker and Railgun. But on the other hand, planetary hazards are active, so now you can also die in a fire tornado. I did find the this latest chapter in Apple v. Epic uh, very entertaining. Um, again, I'm big sort of let them fight mode, but... Like, Tim Sweeney, through this whole thing, has been such a wiener. and He's been unhinged. Yeah, and it's, very like, since the beginning of all of this. But it is very funny that they're like, they're like, this is, this is punitive. Apple is punishing us. And Apple's like, yes, <laughs> because you, you did a thing that isn't allowed. And it certainly looks like you'd be happy to do it again. So... They're, no, they're within their rights not to let them make yeah. an account on the and, service. You know, and, and like it's a pri it's a private company. It's not a government utility. Yeah. They're not offer. They're not obligated to let you have. 
you know, it just, it seems like all of these business people are like so into like individual liberties and freedoms until theirs are impacted. And I do, to be, to be, to be, to be clear, I'm not, not necessarily defending uh, the walled garden of the app store here either. Right. Um, I think. I think if it had gone a little a little differently on Tim's end of things, there's some interesting discussions to be had about that and about uh, Apple's how they handle the App Store and and all of that. Uh, and in in fact, in the cases of the 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 DMA, I think it's probably going to be to consumer benefit for people to be allowed to put other stuff onto their iOS devices. Uh, but I do think it's totally understandable and appropriate for apple to be like but not epic because <laughs> you know because you broke our terms of service and you don't typically get a second chance with stuff like that and they did they very much did it on purpose in fact they made a whole court case about how on purpose they did it mm -hmm. uh there's a i think Ooh. tim himself actually released an email from phil schiller that was like because you've shown I'm I'm paraphrasing and I'm using words that Phil didn't use, but basically he's like, no, because you've shown yourself to be a big wiener, and if you and you need to, you would you would among other things, you would need to promise that you wouldn't continue your wienering. And he and Tim Sweeney responded basically like, yeah, f yeah, trust me, bro. Uh, and they were like, ah, this is legally not good enough for us. <laughs> so they they so they didn't they didn't go for it. Oh, well. Oh, big, big companies maybe make less money. Boo-hoo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're doing fine without being on the App Store. Yeah. Uh, the other Warner Brothers thing, and of course everyone's been like, yeah, live services, that's definitely what's going well for you. They also, um, this is a much smaller scale than like Batgirl or the Looney Tunes movie, but there's um, an indie game, uh, Small Radio's Big Televisions, which was made through Warner Brothers, well, published through Warner Brothers Games Division. Uh, and they're just like, oh, we're uh, we're pulling that off Steam. And the dev is like, what? Why? <laughs> what? Huh? It's like, surely it can't cost you so much money to keep this game available for purchase. And they're like, Meh. Nah. We're shutting down the whole division and nobody's responsible for yeah. it anymore. So the dev has put it up on, on their own website for free download. <laughs> uh, can the dev get their stuff back at least? I, I don't know. I don't know how all that works. Probably not. Speaking of things that Warner Brothers have shut down. Oh, yeah? They shut down Rooster Teeth. R.I.P. Rooster Teeth. Oh, yeah, right. I guess that, that is that is more, more than yeah. more than tangentially gaming related. Um is wild. I I got into my thoughts and feelings about this a little bit on Mastodon uh, the other day, kind dot social, but you know Rooster Teeth launched uh, month only months before Loading Ready Run. Wow! Right, like April two thousand three, and you know so they're they're in their twenty first year now, uh, and you know years ago they sort of sold to it was like full screen and then someone else i think bought full screen i think there was an intermediate step in the middle there and then eventually they ended up in warner brothers and you know things got more and more corporate and you know the founders quite smartly got their bag and moved to scotland <laughs> i think well one of them did anyway and uh you know but it is it's it's wild to to look at sort of like the 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 early companies that started doing new media entertainment this kind of thing yeah right i mean like we 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 predate screw attack by only a few years but they it's amusingly they actually got subsumed into rooster teeth and themselves then and then dissolved with, uh, with and with craig saying that they were terrible and stuff like that mm -hmm. and not again not the not the people that you know or like from from rooster just teeth, the but, corporate management which at that point were very divorced from the original founding people yeah and it's just sort of like you know, it's basically my, 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 if I had to succinct my thesis, it was like we, over the years, there's a lot of decisions that we could have made differently that potentially would have been, would have led to bigger and better things and more financial security for everyone here at Loading Ready Run. But we're not getting shut down by corporate. We get to be so, as weird as we want. Yeah. And we get that to means do a what lot. We want. Yeah. 
hey, uh, please follow the channel and uh, support us if you wish at patreon.com slash loading ready run. Or just keep watching and telling your friends about all of these extremely independent weirdos who are beholden to no corporate interests. Yeah, no, seriously, tell your friends, spread the word. It's, uh, it's, it's really helpful.